Welcome back, this is Cereal Snacks. Today I'm looking at a free-to-play game that just came out on Steam this week. It's been out for a while, uh, but I haven't done a first impressions on it until now. It's called Blacklight Retribution. It's a basically a shooter in the vein of some of the other modern shooters that are out there right now. You know, basic modern-day weapons, modern-day armor, uh, a lot of customization and that sort of stuff. So, you can see I've got my level 1 agent cereal snacks. And it's a free-to-play game, but I will say that there are some things that make it a little bit sketchy as a free-to-play game. It's not quite a pay-to-win. I know that there's some games out there that are considered pay-to-win. Uh, you know, so they're not really free-to-play. You have to pay to actually do anything. So far, this doesn't seem entirely like that, but I could see it getting that way. Uh, you know, it just came out on Steam, so there's been a resurgence of people playing it. And, of course, I downloaded it because it's free to play, and I just wanted to take a look at it, and I wanted to give you my first impressions of it. So, with, with, with that said, let's just take a quick look. Uh, you know, so the free-to-play model, you can see you can just jump in and play the game online. It's got a, There's a marketplace, uh, training settings, all that stuff. Let's look at customization. Now, the customization for this game is pretty significant, but I will say that to get anywhere, you have to actually spend some money. So they have, if you look at your profile, you can see that I've got stuff like unlocks and of course I've unlocked nothing now you can unlock this stuff by leveling up so like level one I've unlocked all this stuff however I can only use stuff that I have purchased now I believe this combat rifle for example uh, is r currently rented for me so I can actually use that because it's rented but these other yellow ones you actually have to pay money for so if I want to go into if I want them to be unlocked for me like unlocked unlocked I'd actually need to go into the marketplace and buy it so there's similar with like the the, the titles you know there's a title um, that you can actually buy so here's kind of the marketplace I, I just clicked a link and it went into the marketplace but to buy this title uh, you actually you can't buy it with GP so there's two types of money that you can have in this game and one of them is GP which you accumulate through killing people in the game and the other one is Zen, which Zen to me is basically dollars. So if you're an American, it's dollars. If you're in any other country, it's whatever you know uh, currency you're using. So in America, uh, 5,000 Zen costs five dollars. So if you pay five dollars, five dollars, you actually get a title called Deep Pockets. Kind of ridiculous in my opinion. Doesn't do you any good. Mr. Moneybags is the same thing. Ten dollars, you get a Mr. Moneybags title. All the rest of them are like awards. But with that said, with the with the money that you can spend, you can see you can buy emblems. Uh, actually, most of the emblems are free. But it looks like there's some that you pay for or they're awarded. Uh, so you can just put an emblem on. So there's a lot of customization. Emotes, even emotes in this game, you have to pay for. So to to bow in the game, you actually have to buy it. Let's see how much that costs. Two hundred and fifty or so two dollars and fifty cents to get a bow emote. Kind of interesting. You get there's awards though too, so not a big deal. Uh, voice packs. You can get C Nanner's voice. You know he's a popular uh, YouTuber out there who does uh, games like this a lot. I think so. C Nanner's voice pack. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Anyway, um, so the other thing you can do is equipment, and of course, like I was saying with the customization, there's all kinds of ways to customize. So you can actually customize your helmet, and like I said, each one, of course, you need to buy. Now the nice thing about the helmets, they they actually give you different stats. So, but most of them only require GP. So over time, you could accumulate better helmets without having to actually pay money. You can pay, of course, the, uh, 20 Zen, that's 20 cents, uh, and buy the helmet without having to unlock it. But um, the nice part is that most of the equipment, it, it can be just purchased through GP, which, of course, takes play in the game over and over and over. Now, I will say that some of the weapons... Um, are pretty powerful however they've devised a new system so you can go in here and this is kind of a gun that I've got you can you can customize your gun you can customize like the receiver the muzzle the barrel the magazine I mean it's crazy what you can customize and you can actually unlock through GP actually yeah through GP you can unlock parts of the guns and then customize a gun and of course you see over here there's like a ton of stats in this game. I'm not going to go too much into detail on it, but there's a ton of stats you can then go into and customize. That's pretty cool. It's kind of a way to tweak yourself just by unlocking parts for a gun. So that's a really interesting. You know, a lot of these games have customization, but I've never seen customization quite this deep. And for casual players, I'm, I consider myself relatively casual. It can be a little overwhelming, 
but it's kind of neat. You can put these little things hanging on it. So anyway, uh, you've got all that stuff. You got your equipment. Now, like I was saying, it's not necessarily a pay to win, but if you go into, let's go back to the marketplace and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you want to get, for example, this really good gun at level one, I don't know if it's really good, but it's a level one gun and it's got um, incendiary browns and that sort of thing. It costs you 200 GP. However, that 200 GP allows you to only use that item for one day. So you have to, to get it permanently, you'd actually have to, actually I don't believe you can get it permanently. So it, it's actually a rented gun and you can, let's see if we can do it. I don't think you can, payment option to use Zen. No, I don't think you can actually buy the gun permanently. Now, there the, you could of course make that gun out of parts, but that'll take you a ton of GP. So there is kind of that 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 feeling that the rental system is neat because it actually allows you to get items that are really powerful. So, for example, let's go back to featured. If I get the burning sensation, it's 200 GP. If you play a good game, you might be able to get 200 GP in one game. You probably only get 100 GP. I have 300 GPs now, so I could actually purchase this and use it in the next round. But for each game, if you do really well, you could probably get up to 200 GP. You probably get 100. So say you play two games and you get to rent this amazing gun for one day, which would then allow you to accumulate more GP, which allow you to then get it the next day and the next day. And you could potentially have this gun forever just because you're renting it. So that's the neat thing about it and may keep this game from being a pay to win type game. Now the only other issue with this game, and, and this comes from a casual player perspective, uh, it's not a game that you can just jump into I don't think so every day and like expect to do well uh, somebody like me can't jump into this game and be expect to kill everybody every time I jumped into this game I was last and the reason is, is because if I only play it for 10 or 15 minutes a day or play it for an hour a day because that's the only time I have to play uh, I'm gonna get stomped over and over and over and that's just because it's a multiplayer game that takes a fair amount of skill so from what I've seen the equipment doesn't have too much of an effect it's really just are you good at playing these types of games so and, and uh, it's not necessarily a genre that I'm particularly interested in I mean I'm excited about the fact that these are going free to play and I, that means I don't have to buy the game because it's not something that I'm really willing to buy but it does give me the opportunity to play it so so let me, you know, now that I've gone through this, I, I hopefully, if, if you if you weren't interested in seeing all this customization options, hopefully you've clicked my annotation to skip all this. I just wanted to show you kind of what this is all about. Uh, I'm in the training mode right now. I'll jump out of it really quick. I've got a nice training mode to show you kind of what the game is all about. I'm going to exit out of that because we don't really want to watch that right now. But I just wanted to show you kind of a quick view of that, the things you can do in here. Of course, settings, all that. You know, it's a free-to-play game, but in reality, it's really not. You're going to have to spend some money to, to, to do anything um, real fun. Although, if you're just a casual player like me and you don't mind getting beat up every once in a while, it might be fun to come in here and not spend any money at all and just toy around with it. Uh, all it takes is a download, so, so that might be worth doing. So, with that said, let's jump into the game. I'm going to pick a game here, and we will play that game. And I'm just going to do a quick join to a random match. Now you can do multiple matches like deathmatch and that sort of thing but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to do quick join because that will just let me jump into a match really quickly. It may be deathmatch, it may be one of the other ones and if it is one of the other ones I'll discuss it uh, but they have the different types of that you expect from any type of these FPS games. So we'll do quick join. So looks like we're on a team right now. Now the weird thing is everybody is named player. They're not bots. I'm actually playing online. So that's kind of weird. This is a team deathmatch. So you're on teams, but you obviously want to delete the other player. And there you can see some players in the distance. I'm going to hide behind this police car. Oh, and oh, got some early action. I'm already doing pretty well here. Already killed somebody. And you can see I'm activating this hyper reality visor. Ooh, got another guy. I'm the team warlord at this point. Ooh, and I got shot by player because everybody's named player. And of course, somebody's saying, anyone else seen everyone's name as player? <laughs> so there's some kind of bug going on with our game right now. Anyway, I jumped right into the action, so I didn't get a chance to really explain a lot of this stuff. I'm just using the standard guns. You can see the standard gun still does quite a bit of damage. I took out two people relatively quickly without, you know, really going into them. I'm switching some weapons here. Somebody's shooting at me over there. Hold on one second. So I'm using the hyper-reality visor. I used it briefly. 
and I'm dead again. Anyway, the hyper reality visor it allows you to see your enemies through the walls. It, it kind of eliminates camping from these types of games. It's a real popular thing to do is to hide someplace and just shoot people as they run by. You can't really do that in this game because everybody has a hyper reality visor which allows them to see the enemy players through walls for a limited amount of time. Now you can't use it all the time, but it but it's really helpful and it keeps people on the move. So you can see I'm using it right here. So you can see the orange players are the ones I'm going after. I only get a limited use, but it's pretty it's a pretty quick cooldown, so it doesn't really hamper me too much. I just try to click it every time it comes up just so I can see what's going on. It, people are fairly new to the game, so I'm not sure that everybody's using the visor yet, but it'll soon become so used that it's gonna be a necessity to actually use it. There's some people up here, I'm gonna try to shoot them. Ooh, guy up there, he's probably gonna get up. Oh, I got him. Awesome. So I got a revenge kill. I guess he was player. You know, the guy that killed me before. <laughs> so I can swap guns off the dead players, which is another neat thing because if you happen to kill a player that's purchased a great gun, you can actually get that gun as well, which is nice. Uh, so there are some things that just level the playing field like that. And I'm and I'm doing okay in this game. I did terrible in last game. I'm second on my team, but you know that's not saying a lot. I'm probably not gonna do too well as time goes on here because. It's not a game that um, really, you know, it's, this isn't necessarily my genre. So, like I've said that before, but um, let's just run through here. So I'm keep using this hyper reality visor, and it's gonna become one of those things that everybody's gonna, you know, probably it, probably over time will get tired of is having to use that visor every five seconds just to see where everybody is. There's another thing in the game, and I and I haven't seen one yet. And you can see your respawn time gets longer every time you get killed. Uh, see, I'm starting to lose my... Everybody was probably shocked that everybody's named Player, and I got a few kills off that. And now I'm starting to get owned by the players that, that are actually good at these types of games. So here I'm using the Hyper Reality Visor again. So, like I said, we've, uh, there's, a, there's a mech suit that you can get, and it's, uh, it's called, like, I think it's called a mini mech or something like that. Heavy mech, hard, or a hard point suit. Regardless, it's a suit that is, makes you very very powerful you obviously move really slow I'm gonna try to get one of those suits in this game and of course by doing that I'm let's see if this guy yep cool the guy that killed me got killed awesome thanks player but yeah so th there's this mech suit and hopefully I can find one here uh, let's see that was that was actually the supply station back there you can actually buy stuff mid game if you need to I'm not gonna do that because it's kinda probably get myself shot if I do so I'm just going to keep going towards the action. You can sprint. You can see I'm holding down shift and sprinting. Much like other games. You can't do it infin infinitely, but it's still a nice little trick. So let's see here. Oh, there's a here's somebody. Oy. And of course, he had a rocket launcher, which is kind of ridiculous. I'm not sure. I think everybody has those, but I've not yet figured out how to equip it yet. So, you know, this is kind of my first impressions of this game. And... So far, it's like I said, it's one of those games that if you love these type of shooting games, this might be a great game to play. The graphics are nothing to like, you know, write home about. They're not they're not extremely great compared to other games like this, but they're they're not bad. And uh, let's hold on. I'm, oh, I got the guy. So I didn't get the kill shot, but I got some points for assisting. So I'm, I'll be curious to see how many gold point or GP I get out of this to buy more units. That'll be interesting to see. And this map is slightly odd. It's like in a construction site, I guess, which is kind of kind of strange, right? Uh, but oh, there's a guy right down here. Let's see if we can snipe him from up above. Ooh, I don't think he sees me up here. And I take him out easily. So there's there's definitely some places you want to be in this map to to kind of have the advantage over the other players. And it's weird because oh, there's another one down here. Let's see if we can get him next. Where'd he go? You can see the motion blur as I turn, so it's got all the kind of the modern day graphics that, that the games have. Uh, got them. Alright. So I'm not doing too bad. I got revenge. Ooh, now here we go. Here's one of these hard point mechs. And I think I can, it's a hard suit, so I can actually get into the hard suit. If I hold down E, and I didn't do it fast enough, so this guy got it. And I'm going to follow him around a little bit. Now one thing to note about these hard mechs is they're very difficult to kill and that makes you pretty good like I said they move kinda slow and of course I got shot by somebody going after the hard suit so if you can go after their hard points you can actually take them out although I've had limited success with that I know where their where their vulnerabilities are and I shoot the vulnerability and I still get wasted by the suit so I'm gonna go after the hard suit 
if the enemy team gets it and I'm going to try to kill the guy, but I think that one thing I'm learning quickly is that it's probably best just to avoid the person in the hard suit unless you know exactly what to do to take him down. I know that the vulnerable point shows up with the 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 virtual display that you have, but uh, the hyper reality visor. But even if, like I said, even when I know the weak point, it's impossible. So let's let's go track this guy down and see if I can actually take him out. Maybe I can do something while we're while I'm filming. Probably not, but. Okay, so now see, you can see the weak point is on the right shoulder. So, of course, I can't seem to aim correctly, so I barely even hit the right shoulder. Let's try to keep going for that right shoulder. Oh, and like I said, it's so incredibly powerful that even if you know the weak point, it's not a really huge advantage. Unless you can pull this guy off guard. So, we can keep going after him. But it's an interesting thing. If you can get that hard suit, it really is great in a game. It's a lot of fun running around in it. And I wish I could have gotten... Ooh. And, yeah. Well, at least he got killed by my teammate. So you can see that I'm not great at this game. Uh, so now I'm ranked down towards the bottom. But like I said, I was on a roll in the beginning. So it's, you know, I think if you played enough, like th this is like my second game in Blacklight. I think if you play enough, you'd probably be able to hold your own. I know back in the day I was good at Quake 2, but that was because I played it, you know, hours a day. So these type of games just require that time investment that a lot of us don't have. And, of course, you know, the people who are younger, who are playing these games for the first time, obviously have that time on their hands and have that ability to get good at these types of games. So, uh, it makes it difficult for those of us who are just casually playing. I'm going to keep going after his weak point, and I'm going to keep failing. You can see, he's also guarded by another player. So, oh, and there he goes. He's activating his rockets, which allows him to move fast. That's also a limited use. You can't use that all the time. So, he kind of used them just to, to go somewhere. I, he, he wasn't getting attacked, so it may have been a waste of his hard suit jets to do that. And we only have a minute left in this game, and at the end I'll show you kind of what you get at the end of a game, what, what kind of benefits you get. I'm not sure if I'll get 200 GP out of this, because uh, my team's behind right now, and if we lose, obviously that's not going to help. Um, but I might get close. I've, I've had a number of kills, and if I can take out this hard suit, I keep hitting his shoulder, but ugh, nothing. So... Like I said, that's cool. If you can get if you can get inside that hard suit and really wreck havoc. Oh, and look, our team has a hard suit now, so he's going after the enemy team's hard suit. It'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Maybe I can go help him out. Uh, I got a morale boost. I'm not sure what morale boost does. I guess boost my morale. <laughs> right, whatever that is. So okay, whoa, get in here. Maybe I can take him out. No, maybe not. Let's try it one more time. And nope. And the game is almost over. So I hope this gave you a good idea of what the game is all about. I mean, it's really just much like all the other kind of Ghost Recon and, you know, um, Modern uh, Warfare and those sort of games that are out. Um, you know, it's very similar to all that. So it's just a, just a shoot 'em up uh, FPS shooter. And that's really all there is to it. I think that, you know, the customization and the ability to make your character look a certain way and it's pretty deep in that respect and that makes it a lot more interesting to me and people like me I think but it, at the end of the day it really is just like those games so defeat we lost it shows who's first second and third on that team that won and of course there's no names because everybody's named player which is a strange weird bug and good game player so there's all my GP that I accumulated and that's pretty much it so I'm ended up with Looks like around 160 GP, not too bad. So, hope you enjoyed my first impressions of Black Hat Retribution, and come visit me again soon.